struggling this morning with how I was going to introduce them. <laughs> Robin Oaks is probably one of the key faces of the bio community, especially to college campuses, but to a lot of other organizations and individuals as well. Uh, so I will let Robin share whatever she wants to say about herself in this space. Um, and there's a very long bio somewhere as well. Uh, Dr. H, I introduced yesterday, and a lot of you, I think most of you, got to uh, hear uh, him share some wisdom with us about intersectionality. So they are the editors of Recognize Stories of Bisexual Men, and this is the Recognize Stories of Bisexual Men book of them. Oh look, people. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's just lovely to behold you. Um, so I'm Robin Oaks, and I'm one of the co-editors of Recognize the Voices of Bisexual Men. And I'm going to start off the program by giving you a bit of history about how the book came to be. Um, I am a person who travels around the country speaking at colleges, universities, youth groups, community groups, even occasionally church groups. And in my travels, I bring with me a publication that I edit, which is called the Bi-Women Quarterly which is focused on the voices of right? And so, you know, many people see that book and they get really excited, but one thing that happened more often than not was that after the program, someone who identified as a bi man would come up to me and say, hey, I think it's so wonderful that you have this bi women's thing. Is there anything similar or parallel available for men? And each time I would have to say, wish there were. Sorry, you know, I, I really wish there were. And after a few years of this, I decided that I would put together a one-time issue of the bi Quarterly that would be focused entirely on bi men. And men who identify in the middle sexuality by some other label. And so that, I'll do that, and then we will ask, and can say, well, there's this. There's this one thing, it's available online as a PDF. And so I decided to do that, I made a call for writing, I sent it out, you know, through social media, and a couple of days later, I got an email from this wonderful person, from Dr. Rukiti, who said, that is so great that you're doing this, it's wonderful, um, and uh, do you have a bi man to work with you? Because in a, in a collection about bi men, it would be really great if a bi man were actually part of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote back and said, I could not agree with you more. And would you like to be that man? Yeah. And within 24 hours, he wrote back and said, yes. And I nearly fainted from happiness. Because we had met you know, earlier, and, and I, I was deeply impressed the first time we met. And so anyway, we decided, we rewrote the call for writing, we sent it out again, um, and we got submissions. We got some really, really, really excellent submissions. In fact, so excellent and so many that we quickly realized that we had more than a little tiny, you know, 20 pager in front of us, that we in fact had the seeds of a really excellent book. Mm -hmm. And so we rewrote the call for writing again for the third time and sent it back out through social media. And the result of that is recognize the voices of bisexual men. Um, we tried really hard, and I believe this time with some pretty impressive success, to get the most diverse and intersectional range of voices we could possibly get. And in the intro to the book, there's a section that talks about the, the demographics of the authors. What we did is after the book was done, we sent out a survey monkey to all of the authors and asked them to answer 10 demographic questions so that we could not specifically identify each one, but rather give readers you know, a sense of who was in the book. And I believe that about 30% of the men in the book identify as people of color. I think 15 or to 20, some, over 15% of the men in the book identify as trans or gender queer. We have men from most states in this country not all, but most states in the United States, and we have about eight in other countries. 
We have a men ranging age from 20 to 77. And it's published by the Bisexual Resource Center. And that means if you buy it today, it's for the proceeds. Yeah, so you would be supporting nonprofit work and nonprofit activism. And it is a wonderful, wonderful grassroots project. And I guess the final thing I'd like to say is that the most and most amazing and powerful thing for me as one of the two editors is the fact that it was a grassroots project, that it came from us. You know, it came from us. And there's at least one person at the conference who helped proofread it. We crowdsourced the process proofreading it. We had multiple people proofreading every section and it was all done by volunteers. It was amazing. It was absolutely an amazing process. And so the only people who got paid were the design, the cover and, and interior layout design people because we wanted it to look good. Yeah. And but it's yeah, so that that's it. It's it's our book. You own it. We all own it together and and that to me is, is the most precious thing about it. Thank you.